Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast 147. Larry here. And Anthony here. What's going on, Ant? How are you? Uh, I'm doing all right. I- I'm a little bit concerned for you, though. <laughs> yeah, the uh, middle of the night, the uh, the roof blew-, blew off my apartment, so uh, this is what I'm oh. stuck with now. Holy moly. Um, well, that's fun considering you just moved into that apartment. What I was actually, what I was actually saying I was concerned with is like if I look in the, the background, um, the house behind you is slanted. So I was wondering if uh, there was some seismic shift at your parents' house. Nah, no, no. It's just the way I got the, uh, the phone. Obviously, yes, I'm in the uh, – oh, there it goes. So Hi. At home, so I guess we'll be holding this part of it. And um, – on location here again for another episode. It's it's very nice. Now you got the sky, you got the upstairs balcony, so it's cool. So so when you, so so when you say the roof blew no. off of the house, <laughs> the roof is perfectly fine on Long Island. <laughs> okay, you just felt like visiting. Of course, yeah. No, I had some stuff to do here, and um, but now we're here recording. Uh, it's nice to actually got a good breeze going, so actually I feel good here. Um, you know, as opposed to the air conditioner. Okay, very cool. Um, I will take air conditioning any day of the week. <laughs> so, and, you know, speaking of seismic shift, I feel like you should be used to that where you are. Uh, especially lately, yeah. Um, there have <laughs> yeah. been, been, been a few little shakers going on over here. So. <laughs> Fair enough. So we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get into this one. You know, um, before we do, it's funny. You know, Josh from Victims and Villains kind of pointed it out to us. We didn't realize we're approaching episode one hundred and fifty. We are, and uh, man, it's it it's kind of snuck up on us, and and just because of our um, just because of our lack of ability to count. Um, yeah. I mean, we're we're looking at number one forty seven today. I think we did one forty six, and we were like, no, did it, it did not dawn on either of us. No, where it's like, hey, one fifty is on the way. So, um, we got a plan. We'll we'll figure something out. Not like last minute preparations. So it, exactly. So and you know. We'll do what we do best, which is, <laughs> I, uh, which I guess is this. I'm not. I'm not work sure. Work on the fly. That's basically. Yeah. Exactly. Well, exactly. I, I think we work best that way, anyway. So. <laughs> uh, but you know, speaking of com- upcoming anniversaries, yes, as much as we have one coming up on episode 150, uh, probably one of the biggest ones I would consider in gaming history, um, a game, a literal game changer. I feel, mm-hmm. and one of the most, you know, created. This man who created what we're about to talk about in a moment, you know, really saw both sides of the spectrum because the very same person who created the Virtual Boy and was subsequently, I believe, fired because of the Virtual Boy also single-handedly created 30 years ago, at least went on sale in North America, Game Boy. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, The Game Boy, yes. The Game Boy is celebrating its uh, 30th anniversary as of last week. Uh, the creator of the Game Boy would like the Virtual Boy stricken from his record, um, so <laughs> hey, we're, listen, not, we're, not, we're not we're not we're not we're not we're not going to associate him with that uh, moving <laughs> forward. If that's okay, because let's face it, um, one of the most um, one one of the most impactful uh, well, I'll say console, even though it's a handheld, but one of the most impactful what video game that? consoles um, ever created. I mean, the Game Boy is what put handheld gaming on the map because before it, there were a handful of other. Um, other uh, handheld systems that you know failed to reach a general audience, or you know, or a large audience, and this yeah. is the one that really broke through, and it is definitely worthy of the recognition it deserves. So, totally, uh, you know, it's, yeah, we had like there were Game and Watches, of course, from Nintendo. There were mm-hmm. other handheld systems. I think uh, eons ago, we talked about I think the first handheld system with interchangeable cartridges. I think it was like a the, macro uh, box or something. It was called the Microvision. Oh, that's it what was. it was. I was way off yes. on that one. And, um, but yeah, the Game Boy made it just portable gameplay, interchangeable cartridges, but most importantly, good games. Yes. And, you know, you think back in 89, you know, you, you, you wouldn't think after having like the Nintendo, uh, yeah, Super Nintendo wasn't around yet, but you know, with the NES, with arcades, you know, you wouldn't think there'd be quality games on a handheld system that was basically pixel green. But I would venture to say some of the best games overall mm-hmm. are from the Game Boy. Yeah, and um, I, think it's a, I think it's a safe argument to make. I mean, um, a, a, a console is only going to be successful if the games on it are, you know, are awesome, uh, bottom line. And, 
And um, when you think about um, so many iconic games, and, and granted, you know, um, Nintendo had a, a great advantage at the time because they had the hottest selling, you know, um, standing system at the time with the Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, and on top of that, they had already started establishing really um, successful franchises. You know, you had your your Mario, your uh, Zelda, Legend of Zelda, your Metroid, stuff like that. So yep. they are they already you know that in and of itself kind of helped the Game Boy become the success that that it was. I mean, and when you're talking about a system that lasted, um, I want to say yeah, it, it was on the market for 14 years, almost 14 years. I would. Accounting Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Pocket. I would yeah. all those. I would include like up until the Game Boy Advance is what I would say would be the true next iteration yeah. of the Game Boy. You're right on that. Yeah, because um, Game Boy officially uh, Game Boy was officially released July 31st, 1989, um, and it did not it did not um, go out of um, production until. And I'm looking at my other screen yep. to get. <laughs> Um, uh, it was discontinued officially March 23rd, 2003. So when you think about that, wow. we were already in the era of, um, we were well, we were well beyond the N64. We were well beyond, we were, we were in like the PlayStation 2, GameCube, Game yeah. Xbox pocket. So if you think about the graphics, you know, Game, Game Boy is officially 8-bit, right? So, uh, no, maybe even less than that. Uh, no, I, they, they. I think they. I think they actually consider it an eight bit. Okay, I think they eventually. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They can. They consider. I think they consider it an eight bit handheld. But um, you're talking about you know going up against you know where we were in 2003 when it, when they finally said okay we're gonna stop with the Game Boy obviously because they came out with the Game Boy Advance and stuff like that but still like you know people were still playing eight bit games into the 2000s because of the Game Boy. Yeah. Um... And forget about that part, just the ease and portability. You know, you bring it wherever you want, on the train, in the car, as long as you weren't driving, um, in school, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, to the beach. So, and, and, you know, it's funny with this topic, I know, and I think everyone's aware of it. You know, I definitely was a big Game Boy player. Uh, you, complete opposite. Yeah. Um, but, you know, what's cool about you having the Retro Freak is that you can go back and you can now experience these because you'll play Game Boy games. Yes. Um, and, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, just some memories and everything like that and some of the top games of the Game Boy. But I remember when I got uh, the Game Boy, uh, it was that original, you know, that original iconic coloring scheme that everyone knew, the red buttons, you know, the that, that plain plastic and everything like that, that, again, that green, you know, which is funny how, and uh, we, we've, we've, gone and buried it but how everyone always complained about the virtual boy being red which i never understood because the game boy was all green um until the game boy pocket came out which was then black and white so but the color scheme never at least not back then never bothered me i never thought about i never thought about it twice i just figured mm -hmm. okay it's a handheld system yes you had the game gear you had your turbo graphic express which played in color but you know I, I think the gameplay the game boy proved that was the first to prove, I think, that gameplay can overshadow graphics. I can agree with that for sure. Uh, there's no question about that. Because the games you saw on it, like like I said, if you would compare a couple of franchises like a Castlevania game from the NES to the Game Boy, it's obvious that on the Game Boy, the graphics were a lot more simplistic. Obviously, the single color was, you know, look, you know could have very easily been an issue. Mm -hmm. I was like, but it is saved again by the gameplay you know, the quality of the game. Yep. And uh, that quality is what allowed the Game Boy to become one of the most success, one of the most successful selling um, consoles on the market, even as of today. Yeah. Um, now, uh, the launch title for uh, Game Boy, which actually funny, I feel like the launch title helped the system and then the system helped the launch title. Mm -hmm. A very symbiotic yes. type relationship here. That's my word of the day. Um is Tetris, which was weird at the time because you would think it'd be a Super Mario game. But mm -hmm. no, they, they threw Tetris, which was the perfect game for a handheld traveling system. Yes. If you think about it, they, they, you know, you could play it quickly. If you had to, you can end it pretty quickly. There's really no, you didn't have to save any levels or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, and it just shot. It's still, that ver the, Specifically, the Game Boy version of Tetris 
something about the the graphics, the the music. I prefer even better than the NES, even better than Tetris Effect. Yeah, and um, what I think um, what was ultimately very clever on Nintendo's part, and they did this again when they released the Wii, okay. is that. They chose not to go with a standard platformer game. Like, if they went with a Mario, great. People know who Mario is now. You know, he's a household name. I was like, but I was like, releasing a Mario game with the Game Boy, I think what happens is you are go- you wind up skewing for a younger audience. You release a game like Tetris, you're actually appealing to all audience. It's, ha- it's the way I felt when the Wii came out, because Wii came out with Wii Sports, did not come out with a Mario game. Yeah. Specifically. And specifically, it was to showcase not only what the Wii can do, but the fact that a- anybody of any age could play this game and w- would enjoy it. That's why I think Tetris was the launch title that came in, you know, that came in the box with the Game Boy. And I thought that was ridiculously smart. No, no, absolutely. Uh, and then later on, we did get our version of Mario, uh, Super Mario Land, which I have to admit, when that first came out, and by now, everyone knows what Super Mario Land looks like. A lot of people have played it. It doesn't look like your traditional Mario game. Um, mm-hmm. In fact, Koopa's not in it. Peach isn't in it. But it does, it does introduce us to Daisy, Princess Daisy. Mm-hmm. Um, the mechanics are totally different. I remember when Super Mario Land came out, I was like, ooh, this is weird. Like, I almost was thought, well, this is the extent of what this Game Boy can do. I was a little concerned. I remember... <laughs> When Super Mario Land came out, because it just looked so drastically different. Yeah. Um, but then Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins comes out. Then we look to go back to traditional Mario look, the way the way he looks, the way the gameplay is. Um, oh, actually, and literally just dawned on me as I'm mentioning this, how a lot of characters today were introduced through the Game Boy. Wario was introduced in Super Mario Land 2. Now he's iconic and has his own series of games. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, and I'm sure there are other characters that started on the Game Boy that have transitioned oh, yeah. over. I mean, uh, the, Kirby. the Pokemon. Uh, Kirby, the Pokemon series. Pokemon, um, absolutely. You know? Pokemon yeah. stayed on Game Boy. Yeah, straight. Yeah, I mean, Pokemon has always been on Game Boy. In fact, you're right. I don't think there is a... There's not a, 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 a traditional... Is there Correct. a traditional Pokemon game that's gone to ma- first a main console? One- First one's coming out in November on the Switch, Shield and Sword. Sword and Shield, yeah. I mean, mean, you can kind of count Pokemon Go, um, but you're right. As far as the traditional gameplay, it has always been on handheld, which it kind of was designed because then the idea of trading and stuff like Mm -hmm. that, linking up with other systems. Yes, true. Um, But yeah, no, Pokemon. Well, what you just just brought up, Pokemon Go, um, that's mobile. That's mobile. That's not not console. Oh, what am I? um, Let's Go, I meant. Oh, Pokemon Let's Go. Yeah. Okay. But still, um, yeah. yeah, so Game Boy definitely had its share. And yeah, it had some, some of its setbacks. Um, the biggest setback, of course, that everyone jokes about nowadays is that it wasn't, the original wasn't backlit. Mm, so yes, you that, always, that, that was a big problem. <laughs> it sure was. So you'd struggle, you know, and, and the problem was not only was it not backlit, but if, like when I was younger, we used to go to a beach club out here, Breezy Point. Uh, mm-hmm. every year I spent my entire summers at Breezy. Um, and a few of us would have Game Boys and we'd play. So since they're all cabanas, you know, not a lot of light there to begin with. So it's tough to play at night. But in the morning, even trying to play in the sun, sometimes that glare would be too terrible. You had to find this balance between the shade, shadow, light. Oh, it was terrible sometimes. Yeah. To get that perfect angle, um, unless you were playing in a very well lit room. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, I, yeah, and I remember that. The, well, I mean, granted, I never had to worry about the struggle, but I remember, you know, <laughs> maybe you and all my other friends, like the struggle was real. It was like, um, and, and and it's funny too because that's when um, a lot of people, um, people who were getting frustrated with the lighting issues on it, um, started looking for alternative handhelds at the time because it's uh, you know and not necessarily to just say oh let's shun the game boy per se but just more along the lines of there have to be better options out there because the graphics are getting better and that's when you wound up with stuff like the atari Lynx, the sega game gear um you, you know you started getting other companies trying to you know game.com kind of, the wonder boy all this stuff Neo yeah like they tried they, they they tried to take a chunk out of the game boy pie basically so to speak yep. so that nintendo wasn't the only one 
profiting from this. And you know, and and they did well. I think they did well. I think the Game Gear, you know, the Game Gear did Game well. Game Gear definitely did well. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't think the Lynx did as well. But yeah. you know, and, and at the time, but at the time, Sega was the number two company. So like, yeah. if anybody was going to compete with the Game Boy, it was going to be Sega. Um, however, even the you know, even something like the Game Gear, which was in color and the graphics were better. It just could not compete with the Game Boy. The Game Boy just kind of ran right over anything else that came in its way. Yeah, oh, not only that, but the Game Boy ate six AA batteries in about what felt like 20 minutes, or at least the Game Boy lasted a while. For the- you mean, oh, you mean the Game Gear? Game Gear, yeah. yeah. Um, and plus, if you think about it, and, and no knock on those systems, I, right off the top of my head, I can't think of a game that like stands out to me from the Game Gear, from the Lynx. Where I can say Link's Awakening on Game Boy again, I will I will mm-hmm. put it up against any of the console. It's one of my top three Zelda games. Period. Mm-hmm. Um, Super Mario Land ended up becoming an iconic game in the long run. Um, you know, time definitely helped that game out. So, you know, like I said, going back with, with, with Game Boy, it's got these iconic games. But with the light, going back to the light issue, I remember I bought very. It was probably the simplest least expensive add-on that I could have ever bought for anything. And it, it, the payback was just endless on it was this little light. You would plug it into, basically you plugged it into the two player port. I think it was mm-hmm. um, on the game boy, a little curly Q light, flip it over. I mean, the thing was probably about that long and it was the greatest investment <laughs> I've ever had because it was just enough to get it on there to look at it mm-hmm. but some of the other and uh, i'll give a shout out to the uh to the angry video game nerd you got to go back. i don't know what episode it was but he did an episode on like game boy peripherals and hookups and everything uh-huh. and some of the stuff that came out for the game boy it was like these add-ons that made it look like some weird uh, like cybernetic freak from the future it some of it was hysterical yeah, and uh, it, well, I mean, and all um, all systems and stuff have come out with really strange peripherals. I, I've always marveled at like what companies come up with saying, "Hey, here's a this thing's starting to sell like a million units and stuff like that." And uh, you know, portable screens that you attached directly to your console to me never made sense because it was like now you can take your console with you. Yeah, you still got to park somewhere and plug the damn thing in. <laughs> I was like, it, it's not like it's not like you could stick batteries in your yeah. GameCube. Uh, to play it with the screen. It's just, you know, it, it always blew my mind. Um, when I was at WonderCon earlier this year, I think in April, I want to say, mm-hmm. um, there was a guy walking around with a Game Boy, uh, and he had the um, the Game Boy camera and printer. Oh, yeah. So he was offering people in line their own, you know, th- t- he offered to take a photo of you and print it out on the Game Boy printer, and I think he was charging like five bucks for a picture, and people were paying. People were paying oh, him sure. for it, but that it was, was just—it's just funny to see, you know, so, something like that twenty some odd years later, or thirty years later, actually, you know, since the original Game Boy. But still, I mean, it's just funny to see that like these things are still pop. They pop up here and there. I've never owned a game. That was one of the few things I never owned. I never had a Game Boy uh, uh, camera. Never had the Game Boy printer. Uh, but the Game Boy camera, I guess you can say was the first camera that you could take selfies with because you were able to turn yeah. the camera around and face mm-hmm. yourself. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very possible that that uh, were true. And you know, um, you know, cause at that time, obviously cell phones didn't take pictures. Um, you were lucky. I mean, you were lucky. Cell phones. I was just to say, well, no, they were cell phones. They were well, like, they was. They were like <laughs> cell phones, yeah. you know, they were that big. And uh, you know, it, you were lucky if you got uh, any kind of signal whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's just, um, the Game Boy, bottom line was, with it, the innovation for it was great. Like, you know, yes. um, Nintendo was allowed to experiment with different types of things that they could do to get the gamer more into the game. Now, I'm very, uh, as much as I, um, um, as much as I uh, don't like playing handhelds, um, I'm actually not, I'm, I'm, I'm unhappy that I missed all the great games that were on the system. I was like, but at the same time, it also makes me think back to, okay, so this came out around the time, obviously, um, I mean, you know, during its overall run. I was in high school and college, I was working and all that stuff, and all I think about is like, God, all the books I wouldn't have read if I had the Game Boy <laughs> with me on the train in New York. Are you because saying like, books I could have read? No, no, no. I, <laughs> I would have missed 
Um, oh. like, like, in other words, like, if I had a Game Boy, like, because basically when I used to live in New York, I, you know, took the subway everywhere. I always had a book on me because I would sit on the subway. I would read my book. I would go through a book every one or two weeks. Me too. Honestly. Like crazy. I was, yeah. yeah. But all I keep thinking, was, you know, now is like if I had the Game Boy, all the books I would not have read through all those years. <laughs> but you would have played some amazing games. That's very true. But as you stated earlier, thanks to my retro freak, I get to go yeah. back now and play all these <laughs> games that I missed. Not to mention, you know, all the, you know, you know. Um, going on Switch Online and downloading these games because you can download a bunch of games as well. So they're always they're all readily available. You know, I bought um, Zelda, Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons, which I yes. have sitting there, and I started Ages and I haven't gone back to it in a while because I got distracted by other games. <laughs> but you know, but I now have the opportunity to go back and play these games. And you know what? I mean, I I am ultimately looking forward to it. If my library was just not so big. <laughs> but, and, you know, you make a good point as well with today's systems. You know, the Castlevania collection, the Contra collection that came out, they have mm -hmm. Game Boy games on there. Yeah. Um, the Contra, which the Contra Operation C is phenomenal. Um, Castlevania uh, Legends, uh, Castlevania Adventure, uh, they're on the Castlevania collection. Uh, good. Uh, Castlevania Adventure is a little slow, but it's still good. But also, on the collection of Mana series. Oh, yeah. Um, and these aren't just on Switch. These are on the other systems as well. Um, uh, Final Fantasy Adventure, or Final Fantasy Legend, excuse me. Uh, mm -hmm. You can play the Game Boy version. So they're, they're starting to come back for a new audience. Uh, but let me ask you this, just out of curiosity, because one of probably the best add-ons to happen for the Game Boy, even though we're talking about the system itself, would have to be the Super Game Boy. On oh, the, yes. The Super Nintendo. That allowed you to play these games on a television mm -hmm. when that came out i remember i had to get it because i was like all right now i can play these games on the big screen at home with a real controller like did it did you ever were you ever interested in the super game boy back then you know mm -hmm. knowing some of these games were available now you know what i have to be honest with you yeah. i think the super game boy kind of like passed me by without my knowledge back then okay like i was i was not i was either not necessarily aware of it or if i was aware of it I probably did not want it because of the graphics. Because okay, at that point, you know, again, at that point, I'm playing Super Nintendo. You know, we're playing 16-bit games. I had a Super Nintendo. I had a Genesis. Mm -hmm. I was playing those. And I'm like, why would I, you know, and again, for somebody who didn't own any Game Boy. I get game, it. Because remember, like, if you had a Game Boy, you had a Game Boy library. Really easy yep. to just say, take the Super Game Boy, plug it in. For me, I'd be like, well, if I get it, I got to buy a whole bunch of other games. And these games look a lot inferior to the really cool games I'm playing now. Gotcha. Um, and at that time, again, like uh, I was more, you know, we were, I was more playing in the present than Fair playing enough. in the past. So I just stuck with what I had. I would, even though you do have a retro freak and it does play Game Boy games, I would recommend to still buy a Super Game Boy anyway, mm -hmm. because some of the, if you end up buying now Game Boy games, like some, I'm not saying the entire library, but if you end up buying some, some of the games actually are designed for the Super Game Boy that will have a better color palette for it oh. um, and, like, a custom border. So uh, just something to think about. That's all. Just something to okay. look into, depending on games you got. Uh, I think a f uh, one of the things I feel like that for people who owned a Game Boy and really took it wherever they went, this may strike a memory in them of putting your initials on the Game Boy games uh, mm. so you didn't get them confused <laughs> with someone else's. Because with the Game Boy, you were able to play two players. You would have to link the systems together. So you, there was a link cable that you'd buy. You link them together. Um, really, I mean, like two-player games, though, for the Game Boy, it was... I'm trying to remember. I never really played a lot of two-player games for the mm -hmm. Game Boy. Um, like, there weren't really any fighters. Like, those didn't come out until a little later. Like, Mortal Kombat. Even that, some games admittedly did suffer from the Game Boy. Don't get me wrong. Not all of them were gems. Oh, yeah. Um, Mortal Kombat was tough. Street Fighter was interesting. Uh, but, you know, doing a link. And then you had your four-player link where you play some, like, uh, mm -hmm. F1 racing and stuff like that. So, uh, but I remember, yeah, just because if you wanted to play two players, this is where the, sometimes the problem lies. Everyone had to have a Game Boy. Everyone had to have the exact same game. Yeah. And one of you had to have a, a Game Link cable. Then you can play. And you put your initials on the games, 
so you obviously you don't you don't get them confused. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I would probably say in my at least from my experience, like I feel like that's kind of where the handheld systems will suffer because it's so much easier to do multiplayer on a console than it is on a handheld. That's just that's just my general True. assessment. Because remember, every, every when everybody, well, I guess one of the two people who were hooking up had to have the obviously the the connecting wires and stuff like well, that. Well, yeah, so. because that would just then plug into both systems. Yeah, exactly. But if you're doing a four, you know, it's a lot more involved. Well, they sold they sold an adapter yeah. that came with it and stuff like that. Um, so that's with the games. But I do want to go back real quick because the system itself is 30 years. So let's yeah. uh, some of the things about the system. Um, from what I remember, and uh, first and foremost, so you had that original Game Boy. Then they came out with the Play It Loud series. Yes. Which were the different colors, and I remember seeing this, and I'm like, okay, I need a new Game Boy. There's nothing wrong with my original Game Boy. How can I talk my parents into getting me? They gave me, like, the blue one. <laughs> no, well, they had, I don't remember the colors. It was, like, blue, red, yellow, black, and then, which was the, screaming the definition of 1990s, clear. Clear. Because everything was clear. Who everything was clear. clear. Telephone. <laughs> yeah, we had clear telephones. We had clear Game Boys. We had clear Pepsi. Uh, <laughs> yes. Good call. I like the pink. Um, so I ended up getting the clear Game Boy, which are those really cool. That one I still have. Actually, I got both my Game Boys still. Nice. Um, and to show also how strong these... Nintendo really made these systems to last. Is that meme that goes out saying, hey, you know, my NES... 30 years later, still works. My PlayStation 4 broke in three months. You know, you, like mm -hmm. you've seen those memes. Oh, yeah. So, and they're true. But, yeah, it's true. And, mm -hmm. and to show how well these systems were made, on display in Nintendo New York City. Every, uh, well, I can't say everyone, but a lot of people know about oh, this. Oh, yes. And I saw it firsthand. Is a Game Boy that someone had with them in, I want to say it was in Kuwait during the, uh, during the Gulf War. Yep. Back in the early 90s, um, got blown up, but it survived. It still works. The The shell is melted, but the now, to be fair, I do believe that Nintendo, like the guy, the, 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 the soldier who had the Game Boy with him. So he gets, uh, luckily, he, thank God he survived. But the Game Boy, I think he brought it into, I think he mailed it to Nintendo, be like, hey, can you fix this for me? Nice. And, you know, and, like, they get this Game Boy, and they're like, what happened to it? Like, oh, you know, it was an explosion, an IED of some sort. And um, I think Nintendo ended up sending him a new one anyway, obviously. Yeah. But I think the only thing Nintendo fixed was probably just, like, a newer screen. But basically the inside still worked, and it's on display in Nintendo New York City, where it's on. You can't play it. But it's on. It's just running a, a loop demo of Tetris. But to see that in person, I mean, for me, it's a bunch of different emotions. First of all, you know, just to see that someone brought this with them, you know, where they were going into a situation that was the worst situation they can go into, um, you know, defending for us, for everybody. Uh, something terrible happens as far as an explosion. And, and here's this little Game Boy that's that's basically still ticking. Um, so a lot of a lot of emotions for me to see that. But then on the gamer side, like. That's pretty cool that this thing survived and is still working. Yeah. And, and you know, it's a testament to, uh, well, obviously, it's a testament to, like, just the overall power of a hand. First off, the handheld gaming system, in other words, like you're saying, like, be, being so ultimately portable that you can take this literally anywhere. You're talking about soldiers taking it with them to war. Um, it's Real just, quick, I, and, it's, and I just want to, because before I forget, our friend Tim, you know, a big yes. fan of the show. Um, I remember this is what the Game Boy Advance came out, um, which was the next iteration. So we get because we were both in college. This was um, right after. Yeah, well, it was after 9-11 because he was getting mm -hmm. ready and he served two tours. Thank you, Tim, for your service. And, Thank you, um, Tim. Yes. He when he ordered, we went to the store, probably EB Games. That's how long ago. Oh, wow. And when we ordered the Game Boy Advance, he goes like, hey, do you want a warranty? And he's like, yeah. And then they're like, what does it cover? And he's like, this, that, and the other thing. And he goes, how about Act of War? And the guy, like, laughs behind the counter. The guy's like, no, no, no. I'm going to Iraq. What, or, you know, what about Act of War? And the guy's like, I don't know. <laughs> 
but he got it, and I remember he brought it with him, and he was playing. He'd tell me this, you know, just you know, and had some downtime just playing some Game Boy Advance over there. Um, so the ultimate portability. Uh, talking about bringing home with you uh, to wherever you go. So, uh, but yeah, that was just a, a funny story. But the Game Boy itself, um, I don't know if there's any other. I'm trying to think of any other stats. I mean, do you have well, like you know, I- as far as. I, I will happily give you some stats. Let's and you know what? It. I think uh, I think maybe maybe what we do at this point is I think let's take a break. Okay. Uh, we'll be right back. And uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about the stats with the Game Boy. And, and we're also going to discuss um, the top 10 best-selling games of all time and any other stories that we're going to come up with with our experiences with the Game Boy. So we'll be back after this. All right, everyone, time is now. Get your tickets. Long Island Retro Gaming Expo is this weekend from when you listen to the podcast for the first time. Um, August 10th and 11th at the Cradle of Aviation in Garden City, New York. Get your tickets now at liretro.com. They are a little cheaper when you buy in advance. And and we're, I'm going to be there, but you're going to be there too in spirit. Yeah, I'm going to be – well, yeah, well, my spirit's not going to be there, but um, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I will – yeah, my aura. My aura, well, I would, through the through the magic of the internet, Yes, <laughs> um, I will be there as well for, um, I don't know, for a certain amount of time. Uh, when it, when it, basically, whenever whenever Larry wants to, to hook up the Wi-Fi feed and uh, allow, allow me to pop up on your screen. Depends on where they're putting us. Uh, we do have a table Richard. there, so come check us out, please. We're going to have monitors set up. We'll have systems set up. So, like I said, try out those games you just bought, and if they don't work, go ahead and return them, but don't tell them where you tested them. Uh, there's going to be tournaments, high score tournaments, pinball tournaments, tabletop gaming tournaments. I'm going to do my best to win the Ms. Pac-Man high score during Ooh, that weekend. That's the luck. They, yes. Hopefully they have an arcade original Ms. Pac-Man. But that's for another story, another time. Um, so yeah, so get you to, we're going to be live streaming. We will be doing some podcasting as well. So if you come by to the table, more than happy to have you on. Again, get your tickets, liretro.com, August 10th and 11th, Cradle of Aviation, Garden City, New York, the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo 2019. We will see you there. All right, everybody, we're back, and uh, we're going to talk about some more of the technical aspects of the actual Game Boy as we celebrate its 30th anniversary. But before that, there was one um, one small anecdote I did want to share Okay. Um, that I forgot to earlier is when oh. I, uh, which was, and we talked about this on the show before, the first time I ever played a Game Boy, the uh, and that was at the 1990 Nintendo World Championship. <laughs> really, that was that was the first time I ever played a Game Boy because remember again as a kid I didn't have a Game Boy yeah. and I don't think anybody I knew had a Game Boy so the first time I actually got my hands on it then, was oh, yeah. that was also the first time I ever played Tetris. Oh, really? I got it. Yeah. Wasn't Tetris in the in the contest? Tetris. Yeah, that's how. Okay, so when I played in the contest, um, you know, it was Super Mario, Rad Racer, Tetris. I didn't know Tetris at the time, so I, you know, so when I played in the World Championship, I struggled to get through the Tetris part. So once I was done with um, the you know the tournament, once I lost. I went over to a Game Boy, with, and they had a ton of them set up yep. with Tetris. Yep. I stood there, and I played Tetris like crazy, trying to figure out what the strategy is to playing Tetris. And then I went back into the tournament for a second time. I lost again. <laughs> so be it. But still, that was actually what drove me to the oh, Game Boy, was the fact of, here's this awesome Tetris game. Because I never, I didn't own Tetris when it first came out on the NES, because... Yeah. I was playing Mario, and Zelda, and all those other games. I wasn't interested in a, in a puzzle game, so to speak. And, and who um, knew it would become like your favorite game of all time? It is one of my favorite games. Yeah, absolutely. And not, not only that, but I have to say, like, I mean, I'm pretty damn good at it. So, Were you the kid in front of me who wouldn't get off the Game Boy? Probably. <laughs> right? Were you, the kid, we were, you the, we yeah. were you the kid behind me that was crying like a baby because you couldn't get out of the Game Boy? <laughs> Probably. Probably. <laughs> I remember, like, the only game I was able to play for a long period of time for some reason was, like, Fester's Quest. That's the only game I remember playing. I know I played others, but for some reason, Fester's Quest is the only one I remember playing oh, wow. while I was now, there. Yeah, see, Tetris, was the, Tetris, I think, is the only one I remember playing. And okay. I, think, I think I played Super Mario 3 while I was there, too. Um, okay. I think. Yeah. But 
think it would come out by then. Yeah, but I spent. Yeah, no, 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 it did come out by then. But spent a lot of time on Tetris. I just wanted to share that little story because yeah. it, it's a good story. The Nintendo World Champions is such a great memory. It so, was. Uh, good but time. but now. Swinging it back over to the Game Boy itself. Yes. Um, and um, I just wanted to rattle off a few things in terms of the yes. specs of the original Game Boy. So now, because we all talk about, um, you know, when systems get announced, like we just had the PlayStation 5 announced, the Xbox Scarlet, and everybody tries to jump the gun and say, you know, this is this is our processor. This is how much, you know, yeah. this is how much memory we have, yada, yada, yada. Let's take a look at what the Game Boy had. Because, <laughs> yeah. again, just looking back on it, I yeah. mean, to have the impact... To have the impact that it had when you look at the actual technical specifications. Again, it's something to marvel at today because we've seen how far gaming has come. Yeah. Okay. So, the the CPU on the system was a custom 8-bit Sharp LR35902, because they all have those stupid numbers. Oh, oh, oh. Um, and it ran at 4.19 megahertz. There you go. Just blazing speed back then. Blazing speed back then. Um, it had an eight kilobyte internal SRAM <laughs> that could be, now this is interesting. It could be extended up to 32. Now, I don't know how you would extend the RAM on it. Oh, they um, talked about maybe by the time they got to the Game Boy Color? Uh, well, possibly, uh, okay. it, it, it's entirely possible. Um, the video RAM on it was also eight kilobytes. Okay. Um, I uh, so the sound on it. Uh, I love I love hearing this type of stuff because it's 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 always interesting. It was because of the names. There were two pulse wave generators. Whoa, there you go. Uh, and one funny. PCM four bit wave sample, which played sixty four four bit samples played at one by sixty four two by thirty two. Uh, <laughs> one noise generator and one audio input from the cartridge. <laughs> and of course, the unit only had one speaker. Yes, but. If you put headphones on, you got stereo sound. That is true. Which was cool. Um, the display rate was a reflective LCD at an astounding 160 by 144 pixels. Oh, yeah. It, uh, yeah, it didn't really jump at you. It really I like jumped. that. Yep. One of the main, also, one of the main reasons why I never bought one. And there was, I mean, it's just, it's the nature of the beast. There was a bit of a blur feature as yep. well that would occur sometimes, so... Yep, and then um, the frame rate was 59.7 frames per second. That's That'll pretty good. The screen size, which is what we were just talking about, and I love this, 66 millimeters diagonal, which translates to 2.6 inches. Hey, listen, that was a large screen back then for a handheld. Yeah. All <laughs> right, and its, and its color palette, which we also talked about earlier, was 2-bit. Yeah. You had... You had four shades of gray from yep. light to very dark olive green. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that, that's what I'm saying, that, that green. And here's what's funny. When you play, like, Castlevania or the Contra collections, yep. you can set the, 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 the picture to, ha to be that pixelated green. It's mm -hmm. hysterical. Uh, see, that's awesome. Because, again, it's a throwback. It's a nice throwback. Now, in terms of communication, we talked about hooking up Game Boys, right? Yeah. Two, two Game Boys could be linked together via a built-in serial port. Up to four. Now, this is interesting. Up to four with the DMG07 four-player adapter. Yep. But you could hook up to 16 in maximum together. Now, there's, I don't think there's ever been a game with 16 players in it for a Game Boy. But it was actually possible... To hook 16 Game Boys together. I guess that makes sense if you keep daisy chaining yeah. that for, okay, that had to have been a racing game then to do that. Must have been. I, I, it's something we need to do a little research on. Like, yeah. was there a game you can have 16 players in? Okay. I just think maybe somebody tried to figure out how many can we hook up. Yeah, right. Before it stops. Um, <laughs> like and then the power Bart had all the megaphones. Testing, yeah. testing, testing, testing. Yeah. Exactly. And then the uh, the power on it, we talked about this. It took it took four AA batteries originally. The original right? did, yeah. And, the re and here's one of the main reasons for its success. We talked about the Game Gear and the Lynx and stuff and how their battery life stunk. With four AA batteries, you got 15 hours of gameplay, which That's was unheard of. of. That's, That's a, a lot, lot of gameplay. gameplay. Yep. So, um, so, and those are, those, are the ba those are basically all the technical specs for the, uh, for the Game Boy. And like you said, yeah, for the original. And then as other ones came out... You know, it got um, better. It got better. You know, um, you know, they, they got smaller. They got lighter. 
Um, yeah, they had the you got the Game Boy Pocket, which was next, which was yeah. smaller, thinner, took AAA batteries, and actually went to a black and white screen, which was yeah. better on the eyes, in my opinion. And my Game Boy Pocket, uh, I, I like to mention, I actually ordered from Nintendo Power, oh, the nice. 100th issue of Nintendo Power. You were able to buy here. This goes like what else was out? A special gold Nintendo Power 100 edition of the Game Boy Pocket and a special Nintendo Power Gold N64 controller. Oh, wow. Which I, And they had a sticker on it that said Nintendo Power 100. Um, the Gold controller is long gone, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but the, uh, the Game Boy, I still have the Game Boy Pocket with nice. that. So I'm very happy about that. And um, then it went to the Game Boy Color, yep. which then went to two double A's, which is good. But then that brought color into it. Um, I don't know if there's any. Probably you're looking at the Game Boy screen, so. But when, uh, I'm looking at it, yeah, I'm looking at the Game Boy screen just to get stats. I was just want to yeah. say the Game Boy Pocket, the screen on it was slightly larger than the original Game Boy. It was oh, two point five. It was two point five six inches. All right, I thought it was a little smaller. Okay. Nope. Um, it was uh, two point five six inches, and um, the first version did not have a power LED. I guess they added it later. Oh. Um, to the different colors. If you bought a Game Boy Pocket in different colors, you got LED. Yes, there were different colors on that one as well. Yeah. Yep. And um, and then also uh, with the there's there's one out. I want to mention this and we'll get into the games. Um, I saw it once in some shop in New York City, right down the block from the garden. I doubt it's there anymore. Mm -hmm. That had what's called a Game Boy Light. Yes. Only available. Yeah. Only available. In, I've been looking for this since for now 20 years, probably no longer mm -hmm. than that. Only available in Japan. It was a Game Boy Pocket, but it was backlit, which is unheard of. Um, I, I didn't have the money back then to get it, and I've been looking for it ever since. Haven't seen it. They're out there. I just haven't seen one reasonable. Uh, oh, maybe this weekend, hopefully. At the long yeah, I was going to say, um, I can also, well, should I ever go back to Japan for work? I can always take a look. Um, That's true, too, yeah. And, and the cool thing about the Game Boy Light was that um, it was, two, again, two AA batteries, and if you played it with the light off, you actually got 20 hours of gameplay out of it. Oh, wow, I didn't two AA. That. Um, okay. If you had the light on, you got 12, which is still pretty good. That's still not bad at all. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. yeah, so that's uh, really cool. So what games, I mean, I know I can name a few. And like I said, some of these games are, I rank them up against some of the console games of the time, even today's mm -hmm. era. But what are some of the top games that Nintendo pumped out for this Game Boy? Well, funny you should ask that because it just so happens that I have the top 10 best-selling Game Boy I games of all it. time. It's kismet. It is. It definitely is. So <laughs> we're going to start at number 10. And again, because you obviously own the Game Boy and you play through them, um, I'm going to rely on you, obviously, to talk yeah, about any memories game. you have of these games. Because yeah. a majority of them are foreign to me unless they were ported to a console. Oh, uh, and, that, a couple, and a couple of more. That reminds me. I just want to mention one thing. That was the other thing. Sometimes the Game Boy, some of the games, they were just a port of the NES mm -hmm. game. Um, personally, I enjoyed more the original content of an IP as right. opposed to just like, all right, we're releasing this on Game Boy, NES, and Super NES. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Which has happened. You know, uh, Krusty's Funhouse is the first one that comes to mind that did that. Um, so personally, I enjoyed the original games, even of the same IPs. But let's see what we have on the list. Okay. So on the list, coming in at number 10... Um, was actually a character that was created on the Game Boy, like you said earlier, uh, which was uh, Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3. Yes. Good game. First game you can play Wario in or as. Um, and kind of, I guess, maybe one of the first games where the bad guy is the lead character. Uh, mm -hmm. Mario's not the main villain. But, um, yeah, Wario Land, that, that was a fun platformer and launched an entirely different series at that point that yep. lasted on to the Game Boy Advance and stuff like that. Yeah, and that sold uh, approximately 5.2 million units. Which oh, is wow. good. Okay. Yeah, That's good. pretty good. Uh, just just a quick note, coming in at number 11, which is right behind it, the only reason why I, I want to bring it up is because, again, it was another character created specifically yeah. on the Game Boy, which was Kirby's Dream Land. That wow. sold 5.13 million units, I which is kind of cool. I would that be in the top 10. Okay. No, just outside the top 10. Yeah, just a bit outside. Exactly. Uh, and there's a, spe there's a specific reason why you'll learn as we go up the list. Uh, so number nine 
uh, and this this is the cool thing about this because of the because of the shelf life of the Game Boy, like I said, came out in 1989. Did it get discontinued to 2003? Yes, nice. um, the top ten. It's really interesting to see when they were released because it goes to show you how popular the Game Boy still was towards the end of its cycle. So, for example, Wario Land Super Mario 3 came out in ni- in January of 1994. Number okay. nine, which was Pokemon Pinball, selling. 5.3 million units came out April 1999. Okay. So, so 10 years after the Game Boy came out. Pokemon Pinball. All right. Um, I have a feeling that this list may mix some Game Boy Advance games into it. No, this was for Game Boy Color. Oh, no, Color. it can't be. No, yeah, Game Boy No, no, this was Game Boy Color. Color. Oh, I know which Pokemon Pinball. Okay, they came out with another Pokemon Pinball later on. Okay, okay. Yeah, now these are all either Game Boy yep, or Game yep. Boy Color. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. What you're talking. Yeah, you know what they did? There was some games as well. It was weird. They had like a rumble pack built into them, mm-hmm. so they were shaped yeah. a little differently. I think that Pokemon Pinball had that feature. Okay, gotcha. All right, uh, moving on to uh, number eight, Doctor Mario, which came out in July of 1990, selling 5.34 million units, about 30,000 more than Pokemon Pinball. And that's one of the exceptions where I said where they take the game, they just translate it, scale it down the Game Boy. Uh, Dr. Mario, though, that works for that. It's really not much to worry about on that one. No, exactly. I mean, again, it's like a Tetris-like game. Yep. Works perfectly. All right, moving up to number seven. And you, again, you're going to hear me say this. You're going to hear me say this one word a lot uh, in this list. Uh, number seven is Pokemon Crystal, <laughs> which okay. came out on a Game Boy Color in December of 2000. Yeah, no, that makes sense. You know, I mean, I can't say much unfortunate about the Pokemon series because... I just downloaded like Pokemon Blue on mm-hmm. my 3DS like two years ago. So okay, I, I got I joined that that world very late, very late in the game. That's okay. I only joined it when it started uh, when like Stadium came out on N64. <laughs> I got Stadium Puzzle League and Snap. Like that's where I came in. I never I never played any of the originals. And I got to admit, when I was watching Detective Pikachu, I'm like, I really wish I got into this game on the ground floor. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay. That's the power of retro gaming, right? Yeah, that's what we do. All right, so um, uh, Pokemon Crystal sold six point four, about six point four million units, and now this the as we get to number six, there's a bigger leap in terms of how many were sold. Number so, all right, so number six, Super Mario Land two, six golden coins, which came out October of nineteen ninety two, yeah, and sold eleven point two wow. million units. Wow, yeah, no, that game's worth it. That a game I'll tell you to try and find and pick up. Yeah. You know, it's easy compared to today's standards, but it's still fun to play. Uh, is it on the Switch Online? No, there are no games, Game Boy games. There on are Switch no Game Boy games on Switch no. Online yet. Okay. See, they need to come out with some. <laughs> All right, uh, number five, and uh, so and uh, this was uh, this came out in September of 1998, selling 14.6 million units. Pokemon Yellow. Okay, yeah, that was you had your green and your blue first. Well, actually, you had red and blue first. Um, and then yellow came out, which is like the special Pikachu edition. Yes. Uh, which I think gave you then Pikachu as the starter Pokemon. So that was that was a good one, I heard. Yeah, and that one came out uh, two and a half years, I think, about two and a half years later than the okay, original. Yeah, that makes sense, yeah. Okay, number four, Super Mario Land, which came out in April of 1989 and sold 18.1 million units. That's the, you know, the first, first Mario game on handheld. Everyone... Got it. I still thought it was weird to begin with, but again, a like a fine wine. That game aged with time. All right, cool. Wait, uh, everything ages it, with time. It uh, it, it aged got well. With time. It aged well with time. There we go. Yes, there we go. There you go. Right. Yes, we all age with time. <laughs> um, most mostly for the worst. Uh, all right, so we're in our top three now. All so right. number three came out in November of 1999, selling 23.1 million units. No surprise, Pokemon Gold and Silver. Okay. Yeah, just yeah, exactly. the, the next in the series. Yeah, at the, I mean, at that point, they were like, I think they were just pumping out Pokemon games almost every year because oh, absolutely. It, was a, it was a phenomenon. It was an absolute yep. phenomenon. Yep. Uh, number two came out in February of 1996, selling 31.4 million units. The OG, Pokemon Red, Green, and Blue. I'll do it. Yeah. I'll do it. Um, and then number one, and to, this should be to no surprise whatsoever, yeah. which is the top selling one. Um, it came out June 14th, 19. Well, that's interesting. It came out June 14th, 1989, uh, I guess in Japan, predated the release 
of the North American Game Boy, um, selling 35 million units, Tetris. And obviously it makes sense because Tetris came with the Game yep. Boy when you bought it. Um, I'm assuming uh, they counted that in that number, but they not do. fully. No, they usually do. Yeah. Yeah. Because at some point the Game Boy came without a game, right? Yeah, eventually it did. And plus you got a subsequent game like the Game Boy Pocket, exactly. Game Boy Color. Because because at the end of the day, the Game Boy itself, when you factor in the Game Boy Color, Pocket, all that stuff, it sold 118.7 million units, the Game Boy itself. Absolutely. Yeah, which that is insane. That's a winner. Yeah. So anyway, so that's the, the those are the top 10 best-selling Game Boy games of all time. And like I said, Pokemon is responsible for one, two, three, four, five of those games. <laughs> five of the top 10 are Pokemon. In fact, I don't think there's another – I think those were pretty much all the Pokemon games um, with these. With the exception of one. Red, green, blue, <laughs> then yellow, then gold and silver. Crystal, I think, was like the first one released on its own, not counting yellow. Yeah. Uh, the only other one I see on the list is uh, number 16, Pokemon Trading Card Game. Oh, yeah. It's, that is what exactly what it says. Which is what it is. But, out, but outside of that, like there were, there okay. were no, I don't see any other Pokemon games, at least on the top list. I'm assuming they all just made it into the top ten. Probably. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's the top ten list, top ten best selling Game Boy games of all time. Um, yeah, it's pretty damn good. I uh, I may have to bring my game. I wasn't going to bring my Game Boy this weekend. I may have to to the Long Island Expo Retro Expo. You should. It's uh, yeah. I just I just motivated you to do it. I think you did pick up some games, uh, and there's still some games I'm discovering now. Um, apparently there was a there was another I never knew, and as much as I love the series, there was another Contra game that was on oh, the wow. original Game Boy. Uh, it played more like Contra 3 on Super Nintendo, but uh, yeah, that uh, there's an amazing Gradius game on Game Boy I'd never even heard of until I saw it shopping that game on, and it's an old game. Mm -hmm. So you still get these gems that every now and again pop up uh, and just, just are fantastic to play. They're quick to play, but they're fun to play. And for 30 years, you know, there's a lot of systems I can talk about that, but for a, a handheld system, I think 30 years definitely goes a long way. Oh, no question about it. I mean, and we'll be, you know, we'll be talking about the um, the foundation the Game Boy made in terms of handheld gaming pretty much for the rest of our lives. I mean, you could even say, you know, it, the Game Boy, you know, that led to the DS, led to the 3DS, mm -hmm. led to the Switch. I'm going to say it. You know, it's part of handheld gaming, and Nintendo has had their hand in handheld gaming for a long time back with the game and watch series that just so, sounds gross <laughs> so nintendo definitely um knows what they're doing um and the 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 longevity of the game boy speaks for itself and i think the only the, one of the last things to say is happy birthday to the game boy absolutely happy 30th birthday um well you're, i would say may you have many more but obviously you're going to <laughs> uh, happy 30th anniversary to yeah to a great handheld system. Which, by the way, it may surprise you to know that I actually do own a Game Boy now. Do you? Well, did you buy it recently? No, somebody gave me one. Oh wow! Because they were getting rid of it. Uh, this was years, like over a decade ago. Really? But um, yes, yeah, yeah, they were getting rid of it, so they gave it to me, and they gave me like two or three games with it. I'm not kidding you. I think I maybe turned it on once to make sure it worked, and then I just put it away. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know you had. I, I'm here. I am thinking you never even had the opportunity to play. Oh no, I've had. You... I've had the opportunity. Well, actually, now I may be pushing like almost twenty. Oh, I'm done with I this have, conversation. I may, I may have got. I may have gotten it somewhere around 2003 or four. Oh, I, I. That's it. I. I no longer feel bad for you. Okay, that's just shame on you at this point. It is. I mean, it's not in good. It's not in good shape, but it works. Please tell me one of the games wasn't Link, Link's Awakening. It was not. All right, good. Them, like... I know for a fact one of them is baseball. All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I do have, I do now own an original. Yes, I've had an original Game Boy. It's just, it's collecting dust somewhere. And I really hope, I really hope there are no batteries in it because I'm sure if there are, Ooh. they've exploded. <laughs> well, you know what battery acid tastes like. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I didn't do it. <laughs> I heard it tastes like caramel. Uh, that's what I heard too. <laughs> And inside joke inside sorry joke. <laughs> on that note i think uh we're coming to a close here yes uh no one no one no one eats battery acid so again happy birthday to the game boy um and we're gonna wrap this one up this week uh again this weekend from when you're listening um august 10th and 11th come 
to Garden City, New York. Come to the Cradle of Aviation Museum. Check out the Long Island Retro Gaming Expo 2019. We are going to be there. Come have fun. Be on the show. We're going to do some live streaming. I'm going to got to figure out which games, but I'm going to try and beat a couple of games while I'm there. We'll see what happens. No guarantees. Yep. And again, if you are not in the Long Island area and cannot make it to the Retro Gaming, Long Island Retro Gaming Expo, like Larry said, check our Facebook page. We'll be live streaming throughout the day, so you'll be able to at least check out what's going on there. Um, maybe we'll live stream some gaming and stuff like that. So there'll, there'll, there'll still be a way for you to experience the uh, Long Island Retro Gaming Expo. Absolutely. Make sure wherever, it doesn't matter what program you use wherever you listen to the podcasts click subscribe like us five star review on itunes check us out on youtube pretty much everywhere youtube instagram and facebook mm. at retro gamers podcast yes and uh, email us email at the retro gamers.com let us know what you're playing comment on the comment section of the social media um and with that folks i think we're going to wrap this one up yeah, I think so. It's been another good week. Uh, thank you, Game Boy, for the wonderful material. Absolutely. And as often as I would play Game Boy outside, that's where I was today. That is, uh, with, the, with the slanted house in the background. <laughs> and with that, we will catch you live from Long Island Retro Gaming Expo next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast. <laughs>